Mr. Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. Happy Thursday. Sorry this is late by a day. My wife is in Philadelphia. Uh, it's kind of a miracle I made it through. The house didn't burn down. The dog's still alive. My kids don't live here, so there was no concern there, but <laughs> here I am. So just like some of the professional grinders, I visit the donkeys every single day. So does Buddy. Jeez, Buddy. You're gonna scare the donkeys off. You never want to scare the donkeys off, people. So this week found me in many, many tough spots, and I want to know what you guys would do in some of these spots. So let's get to the poker. So the first tough spot I'm going to talk about comes in the 2-5 game. I have pocket kings in the hijack. Uh, with $1,200 relatively deep, the villain in this has hand, the uh, plus one, has $1,500. So pre-flop, the plus one makes it 20. I raise it up to 70. It comes around and only the plus one makes the call. The flop with 147 in the pot comes jack of clubs, seven of diamonds, four of hearts. He checks, I bet 80 into the 147, and he re-raises to $200 putting me in a tough spot when we are relatively deep. So this is not a very draw heavy board. So what is he doing this with? Obviously sets. He doesn't have very many two pairs in his range. There's no flush draw. There is a straight draw potential. So I'm showing you guys the range and the EV calculation. So I actually did this for two ranges. One of the ranges is, um, Jacks, queens, kings, or aces, pocket pairs, uh, sevens, fours, and five, six. So basically, sets uh, an over pair to the board or the open-ended straight draw. In this particular case, I'm only a 38% favorite to win while he's a 62% favorite to win. And the EV on that actually is a negative 137 if I make that call. Now that is assuming that we're gonna get the rest of the money in. So the problem with calling is there's really only one card that helps me and that is a king. If a king doesn't come, I'm in exactly the same spot I was at the flop that says, man, if he's pressing with almost all hands that beat me, I'm in big trouble. Now the other range that I give does give him some ace jacks. Uh, I didn't want to give them all, uh, so I gave half of the ace jacks, which end up being six combos instead of the 12 combos. So with the six combos, if he will push with ace jack, then it's actually plus EV of 51.45 for me. Same exact problem though. If I call on the flop, then uh, on the turn, the only good card for me is a king. Other than that, I might be in again, even a tougher spot. So what do you guys do in this tough spot? You have put in $150, you have 1,050 back, and he's putting a lot of pressure on you. What do you do? So as much as I hate putting in my $150, having an overpair of the board, I ended up making the fold. I just think that I am beat too many times here. I don't want to, even if I'm not beat right then, I might be flipping with the draws that he has, and I simply don't want to flip for $1,200. We are at the Wednesday Poker League quarterly tournament. Uh, we just had the first break. Uh, I started with 14900 I'm right at the starting stack. Nobody's been knocked out yet. Uh, 32 players, $1,000 added. Here we go. Wednesday Night Poker League, uh, blinds were 500 and 1000 I'm in the plus one with pocket tens. The under the gun makes it 2,500. I shove all in. The guy behind me snap shoves all in, and he's a tight player. Uh oh. Comes back to the original razor. He folds. It's uh, I have pocket tens. He has pocket queens, and it comes eight eight seven four jack, and I am out of the Wednesday Poker League quarterly. Dang it. So this second tough spot is actually in our little one-two cash game at our Wednesday Night Poker League. Billy and I debated this hand for probably 30 minutes, but we definitely had a difference of opinion on what should happen here. 
So this is a one-two cash game. I have $225. I have King of Hearts, Ten of Diamonds in middle position one. The villain, Ed Garza in this case. Uh, he, Ed loves being on here. Ed loves beating me. Uh, I didn't say he beat me in this hand, but he loves beating me. Anyhow, Ed is on the button with $350. So pre-flop, there's a couple of limpers. I make it $15, add on the button calls, and the big blind calls. So on the flop, there's $50 in the pot, and it comes king of clubs, eight of diamonds, four of diamonds. Uh, it checks to me, I make it 30, Ed makes the call on the button, and the other guy folds. So far, there's really not anything too exciting or different about this hand, but it's gonna change. So the turn is the nine of spades. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's a terribly dangerous card. Now the debate between me and Billy was, do you bet after the turn or do you not? And if you do bet, what is the proper bet size? And if you do bet, what is your plan if they come over the top? So what are the reasons to bet on this hand? Uh, number one, you're only ever betting for value here, only if you think you have the best hand. You are never ever bluffing with just a king, no draws, no straight draw, no flush draw, just a king with a mediocre kicker. And obviously you bet because you want a lesser hand to call you so that you are getting value for your hand. So in order to bet here, it actually requires me to think about what would his range be that he would call on the flopped. And I put the range here to say, on the flop, this is what I think his range is. So given that range, we are basically 50-50. I'm 53-47. Um, but it is really, really close. So I don't really mind a bet here, although I could see a check also. So now it comes to what is the bet sizing that we should make if we're going to go ahead and make a bet. So what I did is bet $75, which turns out to be a very, very poor bet size. And the reason it is, is because $75, if he comes over the top, forces me then to put the rest of my chips in based on the range that I put up here. So I bet $75, Ed shoves all in, now I'm in a tough spot. So the bet of 75 here basically commits me to a call on the shove. Um, it's $115 to win 375, which is 3.26 to one or a 23.47 uh, for me to break even. And based on what's in the pot, a call gives me a 26.96% chance to win given the range that I put him on. You have to call, which is a horrible spot to be in. This is just a very, very poor bet size. So now let's compare if we bet $50 and then he shoves all in. On a $50 bet, bet I have 140 back, and now it's 140 to win 300, 2.14 to one, and I need 31.85% to break even. Again, I'm getting 26.96% and then I can fold. So the debate on whether you bet or not, that's what Billy and I had, is whether you should bet or not. And I can see his point that says, hey, you don't really want to bet if it's a 50-50 proposition because there's going to be a certain percentage of the time they're going to come over the top and then you've lost your equity. You're not going to get three streets of value is what Billy is saying. My point was you want to protect against some of the flush draws and not give free cards. And I can see that point also. So. We haven't come to a 100% agreement, although I do see Billy's side, and I almost lean toward, okay, he's right, I just don't like giving free cards. So in the actual hand, of course I had to make the call because the numbers told me I needed to. Before I made the call though, I said, geez, if he's got a set, I'm in big trouble. Hopefully he's on a diamond draw. Um, Ed is not necessarily the type of player who will really, really push on a diamond draw, so I kind of doubted it. I know this doesn't sound very good, but I was hoping he had two pair because at least then I was not drawing dead. But it did not turn that out that way. He had a set of fours. I just given my money away. All of this comes down to really, really poor bet sizes. Hey, I hope you guys enjoy answering the what if questions, the tough spots, thinking about what you should do. It helps me in my game. I hope it helps you in your game too.
So I late registered the little mini $65 nightly tournament. The very first hand after the break, I get ace king under the gun. My intention here is to limp shove if anybody raises. So I limp, there's two other limpers. The button does make a raise to 1500. Blinds fold, I shove. The two other limpers fold quickly and the button tank folds. So I hadn't played very many hands. Uh, when I got nine ten of diamonds on the button, it checked around to the cutoff who limped in. I made the call, small blind called, and the big blind checked. The flop came king seven three and it checked around. The turn was the two of hearts. It checked to the cutoff who bet very small, 200. I decided to make the call with a plan to take the pot away if I could. Small blind folded and the big blind called. River was the eight of clubs. It checked to the cutoff who bet 200 again. I know he's terribly weak. Uh, I make it 1600 and both players fold. So there was a big stack who, every time I was in the big blind, uh, raised. So I decided, I don't care what I have. If he raises me again, I'm coming back over the top. So we're at 200, 500. He makes it 1,300. Uh, folds to me in the big blind. And I raise it up to 3,500. It turns out I did have a good hand. I had jack of diamonds, 10 of diamonds, or at least a decent hand. Uh, it comes back to him, and he snap calls. Uh-oh. <laughs> the flop comes king 10-3. Come on. I jam for 10,500 left or something. And he tank folds and tells me he folded pocket queens. A little mini $65 tournament at Windstar, final table. Uh, they're only paying five, and we have ten right now, so just a $65 turn. Well, we lost one player before we went on break, so there's nine paying five. Ugh, I took a big hit on a hand and lost about 20000 on a hand, so I only have 17000 going to three and 3000 6000 blinds, and I'm not the short stack. I think there's two shorter than me. <laughs> there's only 320000 chips in play at 3-6 with nine players, so it is a shove fest, baby. <laughs> Can't do anything about it. It's a brutal game. Can't do anything about it. Well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> well, poker pretty much sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's only a $65 tournament. It means nothing about the money. Uh, getting it in ace, king versus ace, queen. Golly. Oh, well, that's cards. That's how it goes. No big deal. Uh, good little warm-up to play some tournament poker before I go to the World Series, even if it's little dinky tournaments like this. So I played well. I was happy. Uh, just didn't win any money. <laughs> so I busted out of the tournament. I went to play a little bit of cash game, played at a one table, two table for maybe, I don't know, five minutes. They called me for a one three table, bought it for $300, and the very, very first hand. I am on the button with Ace of Hearts, Queen of Clubs, $300. Um, there's a couple of limpers. The cutoff makes it 12. An older guy who I had seen play before plays pretty loose. Uh, I make the call, um, and one of the limpers calls. So the flop with 43 in the pot comes 10 of clubs, 5 of diamonds, 3 of hearts. Early position checks. The cutoff makes it 15. The $15 bet is pretty weak, so I call with a plan in mind, and the other guy folds. The turn with 73 in the pot is the jack of diamonds, and he leads out again for $15. Very, very weak. I raise it up to 55 with just a gutter ball, and he folds. So not only uh, are these bets weak, uh, the first, when you first go to a table, you're a new guy and they normally give you credit for a raise like that. And that's what happened also. 
So near the end of the night, I'm playing the hand against the same exact guy. I'm on the button with $500. I have nine of hearts, 10 of hearts. The under the gun in the middle position one limp. Uh, this guy cut off makes it 12. I make the call and everybody else calls. So it's five ways to the flop, $60 in the pot, and it comes ace of spades, five of hearts, four of hearts. It checks to the cutoff, he makes it only $30, I make the call, middle position one calls. The turn with 150 in the pot comes the eight of hearts, bringing the flush draw in for me. Uh, it goes check, and now the cutoff bets $50. I don't really like it, but I'm not folding my flush, so I make the call, and MP1 makes the call also. So the MP1 was a very, very loose player. I'm putting him possibly on a set or two pair. The cutoff, though, I simply don't know. He could very easily have a bigger flush than me. Uh, he could have, you know, top pair, two pair also, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> The river, with 300 in the pot, comes the two of diamonds. Uh, checks to the cutoff. This time he bets $100, seemingly with confidence. Uh, it's such a small bet, though, for the pot size, well, it's one-third, that I make the call, middle position one folds, and he shows ace of hearts, three of diamonds. Whoo! So this was a hand where the cutoff could have put me in a really, really tough spot if he had bet 200, two and a quarter, something like that. Uh, but because he made a small bet, it was a relatively easy fold. I hate the way that this guy played the hand. He has the nut flush blocker with the ace of hearts. He should have made a really, really large bet, and I'll bet you he would have gotten folds. In fact, he should have bet large on the turn and on the river if he had gotten callers on the turn. I just, the way he played it was just awful. In fact, what is that $100 bet supposed to represent? Is it a value bet? Is it a bluff? It's somewhere, it's a bluff because it's between, a, I guess it's between a value and a bluff. I don't think he knew what it was. Um, I don't think it's ever a value bet, uh, although he had a straight. Um, when there's a flush on board and you get two guys calling the turn, uh, I think that's just, a, again, very, very poor play. All right, a little bit of a comeback in the cash game. I won, uh, ended up in for 300, out for 810. So I won $510. It's better than what it has been, so <laughs> I'll take it. So start, things are starting to look up. I had a positive week this week. I've already played one session for next week's vlog. That was positive. So hopefully just in time for the World Series of Poker, we are gonna get on a massive roll. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this vlog. Uh, thank you for subscribing and commenting and, and doing all the things you're supposed to do, pressing buttons. I really, really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys all again next week. Have a blessed, fantastic week. I will see you next time. Bye.